Every second about 16 million tons of water evaporates from the surface of the earth during that same second, 16 million tons of water falls back down to the earth as rain. But water isn't the only type of precipitation we experience. Due to certain weather conditions all kinds of crazy stuff has fallen from the sky. Things like frogs, snakes, spiders, animal flesh, even blood have rained down all over the world for centuries. In Honduras they celebrate Uvia de Pizas, which means rain of fish now Honduras is a landlocked nation with the nearest body of water 120 miles away, yet every spring it trains thousands of fish all over the town of Euro, and these fish are completely aquatic. Today we are talking about the phenomenon of raining animals. Animal rain has been documented throughout human history Pliny the Elder talked about a storm of frogs and fish. As early as the 1st century AD in the late 18th century French soldiers saw frogs falling from the sky during a heavy rain near the city of Lille. This story fascinated French physicist André Marie Ampere. Yes that Ampere who was one of the first scientists to take these stories seriously, and Pierce speculated that violent winds could pick up large numbers of small animals and carry them great distances he might be right, the current working hypothesis is that animal rain involves tornadic waterspouts, which are tornadoes that form over water. Waterspouts usually occur in the tropics, but they can occur anywhere, Europe, Australia, Antarctica, even over America's Great Lakes, if the conditions are right waterspouts typically form, as their parent clouds are developing over warm water. As the warm water evaporates humid air is pulled up toward the cloud, as more humid air pours in a vortex can form in these vortexes vortices can grow to be 300 feet white, and 2,000 feet tall water spouts can be violent and dangerous. When they reach speeds of 160 kph they can damage ships' airplanes and put people's lives in jeopardy. Anything within a meter of the water's surface can be lifted into the air. If the water spout is powerful enough these animals can be carried all the way up to the parent cloud and sometimes even stay up there for miles after the water spout is long gone, fish specifically are small light and flat, and they're light enough that they can be buffeted up and down within a cloud for a long time. This is what scientists believe is happening in Honduras a water spout is pulling fish from the ocean and carrying them far inland, others speculate there's an underground river that's carrying the fish closer to the town, still something is lifting them in the air, is it a water spout it could be there common in that part of the world, but reports of fish rain have occurred. All over the planet as recently as 2017 in India and Sri Lanka, but also Mexico, Wales, Saskatchewan, California, even Philadelphia, Pennsylvania recently on September 9, 2016. Lisa Lobry was out for a walk in the suburbs of Philly now she hears a rustling in the trees above her she looks up and she gets smacked in the face with a five-pound catfish. How a catfish can fall from the sky in Philadelphia some people have speculated that a bird was carrying it, but that had to be a pretty large bird. It could grip it by the husk just a few months ago thousands of small fish rained on the town of Yowa, Australia. What makes this so weird is that Yowa is 500 miles inland, and some of the fish were alive, and the water spout theory doesn't address why some incidents of animal rain only consist of one species, and not all kinds of different animals of the same size, let's look at a few of. Spiders. Now this one's not a horror movie, but it definitely looks like one let's go back to the terror continent called Australia. On May 15, 2015 residents of Goldburn, Australia, witnessed millions of baby spiders literally raining down and blanketing the countryside in silky white whips, what happened in this case is called ballooning, which is a form of spider transportation spiders will climb to the top of the highest tree or structure, they can then spin a web into a sort of parachute that catches a breeze which can carry them a long way. They do this to escape predators seek food or to establish new territories when a spider is getting ready to travel, it will raise its legs and sample the airflow, once it's satisfied it orients its abdomen skyward spins a little silk, and off it goes. Normally this goes unnoticed because spiders typically travel one at a time, but sometimes like in Goldburn the weather conditions were so favorable to ballooning that thousands of spiders took the air simultaneously. The same thing happened in Brazil however these weren't baby spiders, these were nightmare spiders. Folks in Brazil were pretty upset I mean before this video I didn't know how to say the world is ending in Portuguese but. I do now if you want to see more of that link to some spider rain videos below. Worms. Worms from the sky is strange because it can occur in calm weather as well as stormy, and worms don't seem to mind the cold, either thousands of worms appeared on a snowy mountain in Norway in 2015 
and scientists still don't know how it happened, the worms were first noticed by a skier who said the mountain was covered with thousands of them he assumed they were dead, but then he grabbed a few and. They were alive how the worms couldn't have come from the ground. Because under the snow was about a meter of soil frozen solid, so general consensus is that a violent air pocket lifted the worms and then dropped them on the mountain, but from where? Where are there thousands of live worms in the mountains in Norway in March, nobody knows Sweden same thing raining worms. How so I did some research, and it seems that this has been happening in Scandinavia since at least the 1920s, and in Europe far before that nobody knows why. Scotland 2011 so many sky worms rained on a middle school football game that they had to call up the game and go inside. Texas 2015 clumps of earthworms appeared in the middle of the street out of nowhere, hundreds of them in piles in the street from where Aurora, Michigan 2016 and Tucson, Arizona 2018. This is sounding a lot less like weather and more like an invasion blood oh, nothing is better at whipping up a little local hysteria like raining blood. Cases of blood rain or red rain have been recorded since Homer's Iliad and throughout history in Europe alone, there are hundreds of reports of blood rain going back centuries. And every time it occurred it was considered supernatural and a bad almond in the year 787 AD, there was a recorded rain of blood that was later said to predict the Viking invasion of England. In Germany a shower of blood in 1347 was followed by the arrival of the Black Plague. So you know they just connected the dots blood rain bad plague. Bad one of the first scientists to try to prove this phenomenon was not supernatural, was Giuseppe Maria Juvene blood rain fell into Italy in 1803, and Juventus correctly came to the conclusion that sand from Africa was pulled high in the atmosphere across the Adriatic and mixed with storm clouds to turn the water red in 2001, blood rain received international attention. When it fell on Kerala India initial studies showed the rain had large amounts of nickel titanium iron and other metals, this led to a theory that the red rain was caused by an atmospheric meteor burst, now that sounds super cool. But further study showed that the rain contained spores of a specific type of algae indigenous to Austria that had migrated to India in the upper atmosphere after another incident of red rain in Kerala in 2012. Studies have confirmed with certainty that the microalgae trentifolia is indeed turning the rain red. No blood rain is not actually blood. Except when it is March 3, 1876 was the famous Kentucky meat storm that doesn't sound like a derby for several minutes, small chunks of meat fell from the sky. On a farm in Rankin, Kentucky enough meat to fill a large wagon, so the story goes reports say it appeared to be beef. But according to an issue of Scientific American two gentlemen who tasted the meat thought it was either lamb or deer. Studies of the meat determined it was lung tissue either from a horse or from a human infant. The scientific reason for the Kentucky meat storm was never settled, but locals think it came from vultures who when threatened, will regurgitate everything in their stomachs to make a quicker getaway. And when one vulture vomits they all do. Oh there's so much blood. Nine days later on March 12, 1876, the same thing happened in London England still no explanation. Snakes. The famous snake rain occurred in Memphis in 1877. Reports say thousands of black snakes. Rain from the heavens and slithered all over the streets snakes of all sizes some they say were over a foot long. This was a huge national story in 1877. Tadpoles. In 2009 the entire country of Japan was covered in dead tadpoles, I mean the entire country. They were first spotted in Ishikawa which is on the west coast of Japan, but dead tadpoles were reported in towns and villages and on cars all over the country in one incident, a 55-year-old man who was caught in a tadpole downpour described hearing a strange sound in the parking lot of a civic center in the city of Danau, and upon further exploration, he found 100 tadpoles covering the windshields of cars. The now is in the middle of the island miles away from Ishikawa, and there are two theories for what happened here, both of which we discussed, and I believe neither of them. First explanation water spout, but even local meteorologists aren't buying this, because the weather was clear the winds were light, and it doesn't explain how tadpoles got scattered everywhere. The second explanation is that large birds like herons or crows or seagulls drop the tadpoles while being disturbed mid-flight. Fine but again how does this happen across an entire country simultaneously nobody knows or they won't tell us. Frogs. It's been raining frogs for a long time, even the Bible's book of Exodus talks about a swarm of frogs as one of the plagues. It might not have been a metaphor this is a real thing that happens periodically in different places around the world. 
1873 Kansas City, Missouri experienced a rainstorm that covered the entire city in frogs. Same thing happened in Minneapolis in 1901, where the frogs were so thick that travel was impossible Leicester Mass 1953. Sheffield, UK 1995. But we don't need to comb through old newspapers to find stories about raining frogs we just have to go back to 2010. In June of 2010 in Hungary thousands of tiny frogs rained all over the country and many of them were still alive, can a waterspout do this if you drop a frog from a building it goes splat, and in all the cases I mentioned Hungary included, there were no reports of weird weather or wind or waterspouts, and in this particular case in Hungary, frogs were falling for several days across the whole country. Some zoologists claim that this is common migratory behavior for frogs that's fine, but then how do the frogs get on top of cars and buses and buildings? Star Jelly Before Hollywood icon Steve McQueen was dubbed the King of Cool, he starred in a little horror movie called The Blob. The Blob was released in 1958, and it's a well-known film to horror fans and Hollywood history buffs, what's up what's not so well-known is the inspiration for The Blob. The plot goes like this it's a small town in rural Pennsylvania, two teenagers are making out on Lover's Lane when they see a meteorite crash just over yonder later an old feller investigates the site and naturally he pokes the meteorite with a stick it breaks open and a small jelly-like substance oozes out attacks him and he goes screaming off for help. 28-year-old teenager Steve McQueen picks him up and takes him to a doctor, the rest is movie history. But the blob was inspired by a real event in 1950, four Philadelphia policemen reported the discovery of a domed disc of quivering jelly, six feet in diameter and one foot thick at the center, and an inch or two near the edge, when they tried to pick it up. It dissolved into an odorless sticky scum, the producer of the blob Jack Harris is from Pennsylvania, and he was fascinated with the local star jelly legend, an outbreak of star jelly happened as recently as 2013. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on this riveting journey. Where we delve deep into the enigmas that challenge the boundaries of the known world. We hope you've enjoyed uncovering the secrets of the unexplained with us, and we're just getting started. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share our videos to stay up to date with the latest investigations and discoveries. Until next time, remember, the world is full of mysteries waiting to be uncovered. Keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep believing.